Welcome to Midtown Atlanta, and it's a Wednesday night edition of ACC College Hoops. Georgia Tech's back home at McCamus Pavilion, and it's round two in the regular season with the Yellow Jackets and the Tigers of Clemson. Georgia Tech, a loss at Florida State on Saturday. Wake Forest fell to Clemson at Little John Coliseum. So that sets the stage for our Honda startup. Brought to you by Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Two longtime rivals, 136 meeting tonight. Clemson's won four straight and now 16 of the last 20. And great to be courtside with Corey Alexander, Wes Durham. Welcome to our coverage. Goes without saying in February, both teams would certainly like to get a win here tonight, Corey. Well, and for Clemson to get one on the road, they're going to have to go to Elijah Thomas. A spectacular performance against Wake Forest. 23 points, 10 rebounds, and a career-high seven block shots his last time out. One of the main reasons why the Tigers were able to hold the Demon Deacons only 37 points. Well, you got like the shades that Thomas is sporting and warming up as well tonight. Now, when Georgia Tech plays well, James Banks traditionally plays well, and as of late, he struggled a little bit. Well, he spent the majority of his last two games on the bench in foul trouble, so he's going to have to make sure he stays away from the ticky-tack fouls and gives Josh Pastor the level of production that he had been coming into ACC play. A much improved player in the post, but of course does a great job defending the rim with his vaunted Georgia Tech defense. So we'll get a look at Georgia Tech and Clemson here tonight. Comes in an interesting part of the season. We'll talk about that. It's round two of the Jackets and Tigers from Atlanta. Right after you see this. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Be bold, be confident, live fearless, North Carolina. Buy your local Ford dealer. Buy Husqvarna. All-star lawns start with auto mower. For perfect lawn 24-7, Husqvarna, ready when you are. And buy CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. So the Jackets and Tigers ready to ride here tonight at McCamus Pavilion. And uh, let's check the starting lineups. No real difference for Brad Brown, Ellen Clemson with Reed and Mitchell, Thomas Scara, and Amir Sims, the sophomore from Palmyra, Virginia. And then, of course, Georgia Tech makes a change tonight. Curtis Haywood starts on the bench. Khalid Moore back in the lineup. Fourth starting conference, Corey, and just the second time in the last eight ball games. And he gives them more of a defensive presence. So you're going to need that when you've got to go up against Marquise Reed. And the keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealer. For Clemson, they have to go to the Book of Eli and know that that gives them success. When Elijah Thomas is engaged offensively, he is a monster defensively. For Georgia Tech, it's about finding the range. They have struggled to shoot the basketball from three-point range, and against Clemson's defense, you've got to be able to stretch it a little bit to keep them on the hill. You see the season low, 49 points in the 10-point loss at Florida State. 28% from the floor, 3 of 21. And a tough turnover to assist number for sure for Josh Pastner, who's now in season three here in Atlanta. And Elijah Thomas and the Tigers in their orange. Georgia Tech in the first year of a long time, a long contract with Adidas Apparel, wears the uh, special limited edition jersey designed by the apparel company to celebrate Black History Month, the ballroom of Harlem's Renaissance Hotel inspired for the jacket look here tonight. You'll see several Adidas schools throughout college basketball wearing this jersey in the month of February. And here is A.D. Gay. You cannot discount how well he has been playing. Rebounds his own miss against Sims. Alvarado. Didn't waste any time getting on the board after a scoreless Saturday in Tallahassee. Uh, Jose Alvarado has something to prove. He was not happy about his performance at Florida State. And you can see he's focused and locked in early in this game. Tigers working against this zone, which looks like a 2-3, but coaches have told us it could be anything. Well, and coaches have also told us, even though they may be confused as to what it is, oftentimes he may not even know if Georgia Tech knows what they're running. But they play it hard, and on the offensive end of the floor, off of offensive rebound, Gay kicking out to Jose Alvarado, and it has to feel good for Alvarado to see his first bucket go through. So 3 nothing and 6 to shoot here for Clemson. This is Scar right back for Amir Sims 3. Ties the game. And for Sims, his 29th 3 of the year. And Sims is a very capable 3-point shooter. That one, of course, not much time at the end of the shot clock, so was forced to throw it up from about 25 feet. But 
able to knock it down nonetheless. The freshman DeVoe going to work. Backdoor cut. Moore couldn't hang on. And Georgia Tech turns it over in their second possession. And Wes, that's really just something, you know, that's that's a freshman mistake. Mm. Moore going, only taking his eyes off the basketball, trying to catch with one hand instead of grabbing with both hands and trying to go up and finish. He was thinking about the finish before even catching the ball. See the Tigers, 0-4 on the ACC road, looking for their first win. Three players averaging 11 or more. And Thomas to work. He's one of those double-figure scorers, and the Tigers lead for the first time. And a wide-open Elijah Thomas inside the zone. And that's one of the areas where the zone is going to have to make sure they keep a body on Thomas because he has space to catch it. You're in trouble. Thanks on the kick out for Alvarado. Bounce pass for Gay. Nudging in on Sims and the jump hook for Abdullah Gay, the redshirt senior from Senegal. And although there's not a huge size differential between Gay and Sims on the block, Gay has an advantage. He is very good going over that left shoulder with the right-hand jump hook. Reed. Had it scraped away, recovers, and Banks altered it. Georgia Tech on the run out with DeVoe. Here's a double team on A.D. Gay. Bounce pass for Alvarado. Corey, they're making it tough on Georgia Tech. Well, they have to make it tough on Gay because he is productive when he catches the ball in the post. And Davis Scar now guarding Gay. You'll see the double team. This is where Georgia Tech has to be able to find open players. And Banks open briefly. Block Thomas. Run down Banks and foul is the call. Brian O'Connell who works on the whistle tonight with John Higgins and Doug Sermons. And the foul will be on Elijah Thomas. And you see Georgia Tech getting the ball in the post again. The double team comes as you get it out. Banks has to be able to catch this when it goes straight up. Fortunately, he's able to regather and picks up the foul on Elijah Thomas. And Thomas, who picked up an early foul on Sunday, was able to stay out of foul trouble for the remainder of the first half. But on the road, it's often different, especially when you think, considering the fact that he's playing against another big in James Banks that will challenge him on the block and on the glass. Six double-doubles, two against the league for Elijah Thomas, including Sunday's effort that Corey told you about at the top of the show tonight. Banks and Georgia Tech struggling at the line. They're 14th in the league in ACC play at 67%. They were 14 and 21 at Little John in the first meeting back on the 16th of January, and he's one of two there. In the corner, Mitchell a three. Spins out, Thomas. Tigers with a second chance. There's a double team on Thomas. Into the corner, three ball, Gara. Slapped away, Alvarado. It will stay with the Tigers in a fresh 30. You know, Wes, one of the things that the zone does, it oftentimes makes you feel as though you have to take the three. Clemson has success when they get the ball inside the paint. They don't have to force threes against this zone. Patience is a virtue a little bit here, right? Especially when you're playing against the Yellow Jack. Look at Thomas. Found the matchup against Alvarado, and Elijah Thomas cashes in his second shot. Well, that's where, you know, Jose Alvarado's teammates have to be able to come help him. Thomas can shoot that easily over top of the six-foot Alvarado. So someone else has to be able to come in there and switch that matchup to get Alvarado off the big. Banks, one hard dribble blocked by Thomas. That's his second so far here early in the game. Almost four minutes gone. And even more impressive, knowing that he has one foul, but still not continuing to give up on the defensive end of the floor. Reed had a career-high 30 in the first meeting. Scoreless so far. Gay trying to back down Sims. Over the right shoulder, that's blocked. Bodies to the deck, and the foul is going to be on... A.D. Gay, and that's going to be a flagrant on Gay for tripping Amir Sims. I believe the officials are going to definitely go check this one out. But leading to the break, it's been Eli Thomas, the book of Eli. Clemson has found it early. The reason why they have a one-point lead. Ruled by Doug Sermon. And you see A.D. Gay, when he gets his shot blocked, wraps up Amir Sims, who's trying to get out on the break, which sparked a conversation between us. Is this the start of a figure four? <laughs>
I mean, you know, you had to think back, and of course, you you ran me down through the history of it. I remember Ric Flair, who was very dramatic, but I, like I know the, he didn't create the figure four. Like the Minnesota Wrecking Crew actually brought the figure four. Four horsemen. Yeah, they've been the four horsemen. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like it. I can remember Ric Flair doing it, though. Ric Flair used to have the drama involved. Yeah. Foul on Gay means two free throws for Amir Sims, who's off to a start of four points. And then the ball for the Titans. And he got one of two. Corey, this Clemson team, I think everybody found in the first couple of weeks of conference play to be very curious. But then you look at who they played. Well, and, you know, they're kind of starting to find their stride now, which ought to scare a lot of people. They are finding their stride, but Wes, you mentioned who they played. But also, you have to think about the fact that this team lost Gabe DeVoe, who was an important oh. member. And again, Dante Grantham, they were used to playing without him. But losing Gabe DeVoe was a big loss for the Tigers. You're talking about a, a young man that went out and scored 31 points against Kansas in the, in the Sweet 16 game yeah. and was their best perimeter shooter, that three-point shooter. That's where they struggled mostly this year is shooting the basketball from beyond the arc. But they found their stride here recently. Six of the Tigers' ten belongs to Sims, who, by the way, started for Grantham after uh, the West Virginian was uh, injured for and lost for the remainder of the year. Here is Gay with the left hand again. Scar on the rebound. Tigers got to feel good about the start here. They, they really do, especially on the road. And they've been doing it without Marquise Reed really getting going. We talked about he had 30 in the previous game. But establishing someone outside of Reed, Thomas and Sims, getting it done on the inside against a, you know, a traditional too big front line for Georgia Tech. And 6'10", Javen White's coming to the ball game too. The grad transfer from Oral Roberts as Reed is on the board. It's a 7 nothing run after the layup by the Richard Senior. Five and a half gone, and the Tigers have doubled the number on the Jackets early. Gay calling for it, and here is Moore, true freshman. And now Banks, right hand over White, left it short. You know, but Georgia Tech continues to try to get the basketball inside. Perimeter shooting has not been their strength, especially in ACC play. It has been playing through Banks and Gay, and you see Josh Passion with an emphasis on that early in this game. Six minutes gone here in this first half. Mitchell, look away. White went for the dunk. Banks blocked it. Nice play at the iron. Settling right on in for Georgia Tech and Clemson now, aren't we? We are. I mean, again, this is a rivalry game, and I believe both teams are recognizing that. And there's a backcourt foul after the knockaway, and it will be on the freshman Moore, his first, second on the jacket. Well, James Banks hasn't been able to get it going on the offensive end of the floor, but defensively, he has made his presence felt in this game, continuing to protect the rim. Regardless as to whether it's White attacking, Elijah Thomas, whoever it is in the paint, James Banks is letting these guys know they're going to have to deal with him when they catch the ball in the interior. We've already seen White off Brad Brownell's bench, and here is Clyde Trapp Jr., the 6'4 sophomore, who had 16 points in their win last week over Pitt, but only a couple of points in Sunday's victory against Wake Forest. And Brad Brownell matching Josh Pastner when Pastner puts in Evan Cole at the four position. Brad Brunel moving David Scar to the four and bringing Trap into the game, allowing Clemson to play smaller, faster, and quicker. Scar tried to split the double team, had it poked away. Alvarado trying to get into transition. Thanks. Seven minutes gone, first half. Haywood is on the floor, the sophomore from Oklahoma City. 10 to shoot for Cole, and turned over by the Jackets, and here is Reed. Kind of slow played it in the transition and almost turned it over. Mitchell recovered. Reed out of the corner on the reroute. And the rebound by Alvarado and a foul by White. Probably more than anything frustrated that a six-foot guy was in there with the bigs and pulled it out of there. But that's one thing that is a calling card for Josh Passers. The guard guards must rebound. And he often brags about his guards, and Jose Alvarado especially, as six foot. He goes in and rebounds with anyone. And you see a perfect example of that on that possession. Alvarado coming up with the rebound. And it's even better when that happens because they're able to get out in transition and try to get early looks. 
The number at the point, the stat on this snapshot here, eight and one at 70 points, three and 10 under seven. Well, we, there have been challenges shooting the basketball for Georgia Tech. That's been well documented. Their defense shows up on a nightly basis, but when they can score enough points, they have a great chance of winning, especially in this building where Josh Pastor is 14 and nine in his first two and a half years of ACC play. Down low, game, double team there quickly, back for Coles three. And Reed pulls it away. Georgia Tech's in a five-minute drought. They've missed their last six shots from the floor. Off the elbow, Sims. Alvarado tried to get there. Offensive foul. First on Alvarado, third on Georgia Tech, and a timeout in Atlanta. Clemson 12. The Jackets 6. There's night balls on the Capitol downtown back after this. Georgia Tech 6 and Marquise Reed, only two points, had 30 the first time, Corey. What do you like here so far? Well, he's been playing within the flow of the offense early in this game, but Marquise Reed, and where people don't think about, is an excellent defender. He's always been at the top of the ACC in steals, but 10 for 13 from the field in that previous game, 30 points, gets to the free throw line off, and I believe he made 10 free throws in that game as well. So he's a guy that, you know, puts a lot of pressure on the opposing defense by attacking the paint. And kind of a throwback. He likes the mid-range. His coaches allow him to play in the mid-range, shooting the pull-up, especially when he's playing against smaller guards. The lost art of the mid-range. You know, I have so many arguments with all the analytics people about the mid-range jump shot. And, you know, basketball players, guys who have played in the past, etc., appreciate it, but the analytics guys don't. But one thing about the mid-range, if you can make it, you better take it. If Jose Alvarado would have pulled up and shot a jump on that last possession, instead of continuing to try to get to the rim, he would be playing with one less foul right now. Right. Brandon Austin's come on the floor. Here he is at the top for Georgia Tech. And that ball got poked away. Trap battling Haywood for it. And last touch by Clyde Trapp. Good hustle out of Brad Brownells defense for the sophomore. I love what Clyde Trapp is bringing to this Clemson team right now. He's really become that reliable member off the bench that Brad Brunel can depend on each night. He's been making shots, shooting the ball much better, but also defensively and can play any of the three backcourt positions. Alvarado in traffic. Tried to follow his own miss. Thomas got it. Here's Reed. Mitchell the catch. Caught in the flange. Okay, what is it called? What's it called? What's that called? The flange of the basket. No. The flange of the rim right there. No, what's it called when the ball gets stuck there? A hell ball. Man, that's called a wedgie. <laughs> the ball is wedged in between the backboard and the rim. It's called a wedgie. Okay. All right. Multiple wedgies in the game could hurt. You don't want multiple wedgies at any point. No, <laughs> no absolutely not. One wedgie really could hurt. Yeah, we'll see right here. <laughs> Clemson gets to keep possession after the wedgie. <laughs> It's amazing. Every time I work with you, I learn something new. Well, you know, I try to keep it fresh. Well, that's the flange of the basket. I yeah. do know that. That's one of the big science terms uh -huh. I've always used. No, yeah. Inside Thomas. Banks got a piece of it, enough to deflect it. Clemson keeps possession with 10 to shoot. Right back at him. With the left hand goes Elijah Thomas. i tell you right now, Elijah Thomas did not like the fact that, that James Banks blocked his dunk. And he wanted that basketball back to go back at Banks. But Banks has done a great job protecting the rim. But if Clemson continues to get multiple opportunities, they're going to be hard to guard here tonight. Austin. Here is Banks, well out. Shot clock working toward 10. We're almost halfway home in the opening 20 minutes. Tigers with an eight-point lead. Georgia Tech struggling to score. DeVoe. Banks the rebound. There's the stick back. And the first field goal for the Texas transfer. Well, and Banks right now staying out of foul trouble, been doing the job defensively, and now getting his opportunity on the offensive end. And you can see just the level of defensive ability he brings to Georgia Tech, but also giving them someone around the basket to finish off offensive rebounds definitely helps. Stop the 9-0 run for Georgia Tech with the basket by our for Clemson with the Georgia Tech basket. Here's Banks all in one motion trying to finish. 
And does draw a foul in the process. And the foul will be on Trapp, his first, and the third on the Tiger. And James Banks making his presence felt on both ends of the floor now off of the offensive rebound. He was actually pushed in the back, but does a great job of gathering himself and going up and finishing. And then just putting the pressure on the Clemson Tigers by running the floor causes another foul and gets him an opportunity to free throw line because the officials showed that as he was trying to finish off the pass. Corey, we've seen guys who were granted waivers to play this year. However, he was granted a waiver on the day of their second game. you got to believe he went through, James Banks we're speaking of, October and November not thinking he was going to play, right? I mean, mentally? We know that, you know, I'm not sure how he was really thinking about it. I'm sure he was hopeful, but Josh Pastor prepared this team as if, with, he was. as if he were not going to be right. here. And right now, you know, Georgia Tech plays a Princeton style of offense in which really doesn't work with two bigs on the floor, which is part of the reason why James Banks and A.D. Gay only played five minutes together in non-conference play. Right. But those are two of his best players. And so Josh Pastor making the change once they got to ACC play and starting these two guys together and getting them on the court more often, it doesn't help with the Princeton-style offense. It definitely helps their defense, but both have been very productive once they've gotten into the ACC. We saw their first two league games, Wake Forest and Virginia Tech, where they really didn't play a lot together. There's White going to work, and he had a two-point game on Sunday, and he's got a point here tonight. On, a field, on his first field goal. And another, you know, the second grad transfer for Clemson in the past two years, the only two they've ever had, but it's at that backup position. It was Mark Denall, the backup center last year, who really helped them and was able to stretch the floor from beyond the three-point arc. Javin White, different, but much better rim protector and can score in the post as well. Here's baseline move for Evan Cole. He got trapped in a double team. Haywood, a kick out three. Boy, Curtis Haywood's really struggling from beyond the arc now. Just one of his last 23. And Curtis Haywood is a shooter. That's his, That's what he's known for, his reputation of being a shooter. Clyde Trapp, not known of being a shooter, but right now he is knocking down shots. He continues to impress off the bench for Brad Brownell. Well, he caught fire against Pittsburgh. Four of his last 11 from behind the line coming in. Knocks that one down to push the lead to its biggest margin of 10 here for the Tigers in the first half. Austin, backdoor blocked, and a foul on Trapp will be his second, I believe. Clyde Trapp second. Georgia Tech will be at the free throw line. And Clyde Trapp lets his teammates know, you know where to find me. Corner ball. Three is good. Clemson was its biggest lead of the ball game at 10. Introducing Pegasus, a next generation all-in-one work team and clamping system. With Corey Alexander, West Durham, how about a check of our Hardy's game summary before we get to some Brandon Austin free throws after Trapp's second foul. Uh, the free throw, the field goal number still a struggle for Georgia Tech as it was on Saturday. And that's the difference in the game. The Georgia Tech also with four turnovers, but you see Clemson dominating the points in the paint battle. A lot of it has to do with Eli Thomas finding his spots and taking advantage of them. And then Amir Sims doing a great job, even though he's knocked down a three, doing a great job of putting pressure on the defense as well. 23-year-old Brandon Austin, a grad transfer out of Lehigh, who had two years to go when he came here a year ago. He's... Graduated with an economics degree from Lehigh and is working on a master's in econ here at Georgia Tech. Puts both of his free throws, and it's an eight-point game for Clemson. And I tell you right now, basketball's been good to Brandon Austin. You got an undergrad from Lehigh and a master's from Georgia Tech? Yeah. Basketball has been good because, of course, he's been able to do that on scholarship. White was there. The lob may have been a little too hot. Reed right back at him on the second try. Again, getting to your spot. Marquise Reed, recognizing he's trying to get all the way to the rim, has to deal with the bigs. When he can shoot over top of smaller guards, he gets to a spot, raises up, and he's very comfortable making that shot. And kicked. It will stay with 20 to shoot after Sims got a foot in there. Here's Khalid Moore coming back, but another look at Reed. And you see Reed right there recognizing he can get to his sweet spot and just raise up. Nothing Brandon Austin can do about that. And if he continues to go, he's got to deal with a very good shot blocker in AD game when he gets to the rim. Mid-range jumper, right? Exactly. DeVoe had a notion, but Reed covered it up. Here's Alvarado who opened the game with a three. 
And a foul on Sims. Using the arm. First on Amir Sims. Corey, look, Amir Sims a year ago, three double-figure games in ACC play after the Grantham injury ended up averaging 16 minutes and four points and three rebounds. So he's averaging seven and a half and four. He's on schedule. He's improving as a sophomore. He is, Im he is improving. I would agree with that. But Wes, Amir Sims is really good, and he can do more. Here is Reed, the punch. But he did and not stick, foul. Uh, didn't stick the landing. Got contact there by Moore. And that's one where when a guy is that far out ahead of you, you almost have to let him go because now you see the officials are going to come over and review that play. And Reed kind of slowed down. And I don't believe there's anything there. I think that Moore was making a basketball play, just hustling back, trying to get into it. One he probably should have pulled off of, but gives one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC an opportunity for and one to go along with the highlight dunk. Yep. In fact, the best free throw shooter in the ACC at 83%. Common foul will be the whistle. So just the and one here for Marquise Reed. And you see Moore was actually just trying to get back into the play to be able to contest Reed. And just late arriving there. But with the guy that shoots 95% versus Georgia Tech, yeah. it's pretty much just giving him a point. Yep. Sandy from Landover. One of Corey's DMV guys. And of course he misses just yeah. because we talk so well about it. That's us. That's on us. I'm going to put it on you. Of course you are. <laughs> 12 point game. Gay to work. Nice up and under and draws the foul from White. His footwork has come so far. We've seen A.D. Gay time and time again when he's playing against bigger defenders as White has the size advantage, use great footwork. We watched him do that against Kevin Gelly and, of course, Chris Kumaji at Florida State over the weekend. And, again, A.D. Gay, who has led Georgia Tech in scoring their last three games, 14, 14, and 15, has really come on. And we're talking about a young man who didn't even play many minutes. Yeah. You know, over his last six games, averaging close to 13 points per game, shooting 54% from the field. You know, he had a similar jump like this a year ago for right. ACC play. But he had a bigger role defensively last year. Not as much zone from Georgia Tech a year ago. He was actually guarding anyone one through five. Six and a half to play Reed. Scar in the backdoor cut and Banks the foul, I believe. Brian O'Connell out from underneath number one on James Banks, who has not experienced the kind of foul trouble he did on Saturday in Tallahassee, for sure. So Scar will go to the line. This is a young man from Croatia, transferred from Valpo, who almost went pro. Hits the first one. And a quick reminder to you, ACC All Access with Jeff Fischel. Coming up this week, our ACC experts discuss the impact of Zion Williamson on the ACC season. Check your local listings on your regional sports network. I would say, without hearing the experts, that it would be significant. Well, I like the fact that they use experts because I actually was involved in that. So that means, that means I might know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Here's Moore and a travel on Khalid Moore. I would say Khalid Moore is having a typical freshman year in the ACC. Some highs and some lows. Exactly Corey. right. And again, when you're looking at Khalid Moore, Josh Pastner loves what he does for this team, especially on the defensive end of the floor. He makes the plays that will always show up in the stat sheet. But as you mentioned, he is learning his lessons on the fly. Hunter Tyson's come in. They get it inside for Elijah Thomas. And a foul called there. And it will be on Abdullahi Gay. It will be his second. That is six now on Georgia Tech with just better than six minutes to go in this first half and a couple of free throws coming for Elijah Thomas. And we watched Clemson in their shoot around today work on that bounce pass into Elijah Thomas. Thomas does a great job sealing the middle guy of that zone and talk to Brad Brownell about this zone that Josh Pastor runs. And again, it, you know, you hear about the Syracuse zone and the differences. Well, what Josh Pastner does defensively in this zone for Georgia Tech, it is different. It's hard to replicate in practice because you can't teach it to your guys, your scout team, to be able to pick it up. 
in such a short turnaround, and it's very hard, but Brad Brownell has had tremendous success against Josh Pastner since Pastner's come to the ACC, and he's figured out how to get the ball inside to his big man in the first zone. Thomas leads everybody with seven points. He got one or two at the line. 14-point Clemson lead. Georgia Tech trying to find some rhythm here offensively, and Thomas stepped in front and knocked away a ball intended for Banks. And West, that's just not seeing what's going on defensively by Hayward. Elijah Thomas, we watched him hands the screen and roll and get right back into the play. Hayward never even took the count, and it turns out to be a five-point swing. No two on one end for Georgia Tech, and a three on the other end for Davis Carr. Well, Georgia Tech now trailing 17 as we approach five minutes to go. Alvarado. Bounce for DeVoe, and a three for Michael DeVoe, his first basket. And just the fourth field goal of the first half for Georgia Tech. Big basket for the Jackets just to feel good about what they're doing at the offensive end of the floor. And Michael DeVoe, when he shoots the ball in rhythm and confident, not thinking about it, they're normally going down. We watched him knock down two of those against Florida State. It's when he's questioning whether he should shoot the basketball or not is when he struggles. Scar had it blocked by Banks. Alvarado ahead. In the lane, Banks fouled on the way up. And Clemson defensively gets their start from the big Elijah Thomas. You see him hedge the screen and roll, and as the pass goes over, he just immediately great anticipation to jump in front of the pass. And then on the other end of the floor, not recognizing where he was, and he had a shooter on the outside, finding Davis Carr, who was able to knock down a three. So it's Thomas' his second foul. And the first of two good for Banks, who now has five. And here is... Trey Jemison, the freshman from Birmingham, seven feet, 254 pounds, checking into the lineup. And Jemison, the number one recruit mm -hmm. in the state of Alabama for basketball a year ago. And we also saw the number one recruit in the state of Alabama for football a year ago come to Clemson and get a pretty big. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they played okay. <laughs> had a pretty big turnout. National championship yeah, game. Yeah, I'd say it worked out all right, wouldn't you? I would say so. Yeah. Brad Brownell wants a timeout. He'll get it here. 14 to shoot. 4.20 to go. And a timeout taken by the Tigers, who lead by 12. We'll step aside to Atlanta. Clemson trying to sweep Georgia Tech in the regular season back after this. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by the Works Pegasus. Your workspace, any place. Find it at Lowe's. By Hardee's. By Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places. And by North Myrtle Beach. It's not just a beach trip, it's South Carolina's most surprising getaway. Get inspired at explorenorthmyrtlebeach.com. 29-17, Clemson the 12-point lead, and Georgia Tech's offense to defense, Corey? Well, whenever you look at a, a column and you see offense and every one of those is last yeah. in the ACC, right. it's been a struggle. Now, we know what Josh Pastor and his team do on the defensive end of the floor. They just are unable to reward themselves by capitalizing on it once they get those stops. You and I watched them at Florida State on Saturday get stop after stop at the end of the game. Just no way to put the ball in the basket. They did a great job holding Florida State as well. They've held every opponent Virginia outside Virginia Tech of, is one of the better ones, right? Yeah, but, okay. they, but they've held every opponent outside of Clemson in the, in the first game they played. And the Wake Forest win here. Every other opponent they've played, they've held under their season averages this year. They wow. do the job defensively. Four to shoot, Mitchell. Little floater, missed everything. And that'll be a shot clock violation. There's a good example. A great example. And you see it from Georgia Tech all the time. They make you use, oftentimes, the entire 30 seconds of the shot clock and take a bad shot at the end. But can they reward themselves? Can it pay off here on the offensive end of the floor? Banks working against Jemison. And a foul on Trey Jemison. His first. That's eight now on the Tigers. By the way, Jemison had a knee injury in the summer. There was some question as to whether or not he would be serviceable for minutes in his rookie campaign out of Birmingham, out of Hoover High School. 
Brad Brown although said clearly this guy's got the most potential of anybody we signed in this class. Well you see he's got the size and athletic ability and the fortunate part for him is he has the opportunity to learn behind Elijah oh, yeah. Thomas who knows how to conduct himself on a college basketball court and when you have to deal with that every day in practice you start to pick up the nuances of the game in his second year next year he should be a vital member of the Clemson team. Ten point game. Both the free throws for Banks. He's got eight now. Under four to go. Mitchell. Baseline Jemison trying to find spot. Stepped out of bounds. Now remember, Trey Jemison's getting minutes because Thomas has two, and so does White. And here's White coming back in the ball game to replace the freshman. I love Brad Brownell. Not happy with Jemison. He doesn't say a word. Yeah. But he stands in the middle of the way and makes sure Jemison has to walk around him <laughs> coming back to the bench. I love it. Brad Brownell is a throwback. He's, I mean, again, just say old school. And he's a basketball player first. Yeah. You know, before you start thinking coach, you think player, old school, tough guy. Nine to shoot. Gay in trouble. Here's Alvarado. Georgia Tech. Got to find a seam. And a whistle and foul with three on the shot clock. And that might, that's an offensive foul. Well, there is Brad Brownell now, 50 years of age, taking Clemson, Wright State, and UNC Wilmington to the NCAA tournament, a native of Evansville. Played his high school basketball with Calvert Chaney. I was about to say, he and Calvert Chaney made a tough combination in the backcourt in high school. I, I watched Brad right now. I can remember when he first got the job at Clemson. And I watched him at Georgia Tech, believe it or not, in shoot-around, outshoot everyone on his team. <laughs> and DeBoe just turns it over. Reed working against A.D. Gay. The spin and the foul. Three on Gay. That'll be the third on Abdullah Gay. That'll be eight on Georgia Tech. And, and you 236 to play. But you see James Banks, and again, in the right way, not doing the wrong way, getting on Michael DeVoe because that turnover made Gay get the third foul. Right. Because you, now you're, you're scrambling to get back in transition, trying not to get up the bucket, and Gay picks up his third foul because of really Michael DeVoe had nowhere to go with that play. You know, made a freshman mistake, got in the air with nowhere to pass the basketball, but now you see Jose Alvarado going to DeVoe. Just give him a pat on the back. Let him know, hey, everything's good. You're going to be fine. John Newman the third is into the ball game as Marquise Reeds missed two free throws. That's your fault. You did that. No, no. That one is straight on you, 12. Okay. I'll take it. Seven see, for Reed. I'm going to play point guard. No. I, all the turnovers are my fault. I get it. Even though I threw it right to you, oh. and you let it go through your hands out of bounds, it's my fault. I'll take it. 11-point yeah. <laughs> lead for Clemson. You're taking that one. Here's Haywood. I might be responsible for a couple others. <laughs> Haywood couldn't hang on. Georgia Tech had a backdoor cut set up. They couldn't finish the connection, so it'll go right back to Clemson. You see Khalid Moore has come back in. White stays on the floor. Cole is out there with Austin and Alvarado. Corey, fairly big two minutes to close the shop here in the first half. It really is. And you look at Georgia Tech with only 30 points. Josh Pastor trying to push every button possible to find some offense. And now with A.D. Gay on the bench with three fouls, really one of your better offensive options makes it even tougher. Mitchell trying to stay away from the trap. Nice pass. White to catch. Block Banks. James Banks having a really good game defensively. He really is. And again, I thought he was way behind that play, didn't have a chance, but was able to get back and recover it. And that turns in to a three on the other end. It's so amazing how you see a defensive momentum play like James Banks with the recovery and the block shot turn into a three for Brandon Austin. Five field goals for Georgia Tech here in the first 19 and a half, 19 minutes. There's going to be a foul. Reed got scraped across the eye. And the foul will be on Cole. It will be his first. Georgia Tech, though, of their five field goals, they've got three triples. And James Banks continues. You see he's behind the play but doesn't give up on it, finds a way to come up with the block shot. 
And on the other end of the floor, Jose Alvarado attacking the paint and the kick out to Austin, allowing Austin to get his feet set and able to knock down the three. So Reed, who was fouled by Evan Cole, is uh, getting a little bit of officiating courtesy by Brian O'Connell. See Reed coming off. Evan Cole goes off Captain Insano. I don't know if you remember Captain Insano. I do not. Oh, oh from the water boy? Did, uh, oh, Captain Insano will poke you in the eye. You used to have to put your hand in the middle like the Three Stooges. So be, he couldn't get to it. Must be thinking of my football partner, James Bates, who was in the water boy. <laughs> 30 to 22. Classic, by the way. 80 Great seconds movie. left to go. Yes, it is. Yes. Been quoted many times to us in the fall. <laughs> Hey, if I was in that movie, I'd be talking about it all the time, too. <laughs> I'm talking about that wasn't even in the movie. That's right, yeah. Six to shoot. Alvarado fall away. Air ball. And last touch with a minute to go. It'll belong to the Tigers. Tough shot. And you see, Jay Marquise Reed isn't quite right. He actually asked for a sub right in front of Brad Brownell. Yeah. And he may go down and visit with Brad Crow, the Clemson trainer. Get a little look. There's Brad helping Marquise. Don't forget Hardy's halftime report coming up. Race for the top in the ACC and a look at our first half. Only one other game on the card tonight. That's Notre Dame out of snowy South Bend, Corey. They've gone to Miami tonight to meet the Canes at Coral Gables. Oh, if I'm, if I'm Mike Bray and his group, I'm asking for a night to stay over. <laughs> Two Blaine, nights in Miami. Blaine can't leave. John Newman the third. Back from Mitchell. Three rattles in. And give John Newman tremendous credit. The Clemson bench loving that action. Instead of him forcing a shot, getting to a spot, a nice driving kick, and Shelton Mitchell knocking down the three. Moore out front for Banks. About a nine-second differential. Shot clock to game clock as we wind down half one. Austin. Into traffic, gets it to Cole with five. Now Brandon with three to shoot. Runner off the glass. Brandon Austin's got seven in the first half. Five seconds left. Here's Mitchell. Crossover. Feeds White going up. Banks got a piece of it. Horn sounds halftime in Atlanta. Clemson takes a nine-point lead to the locker room here, Corey. And a great play by John Newman. Finding Shelton Mitchell, but also Austin with the big bucket. And a little bit of scoring to end this thing off, which has been a defensive battle in the first half. And Clemson holding a nine-point lead. Hardy's halftime report is next from Atlanta. Up at McCamish Pavilion. You thought Georgia Tech created a little offensive momentum? In that first half? I do, believe, I do believe so. At the end, they were able to get a couple things going that direction. Jose Alvarado kick out to Brandon Austin for three. And because of that, you see Austin actually starting the second half. Yeah. Look at Mitchell. Couldn't finish it. Sims does. Shelton Mitchell went into the camera well as Amir Sims gets his third field goal. And Haywood also in the second half. So Georgia Tech starting with a smaller lineup. A.D. Gay with three fouls won't start the second half. But Corey, they're trying to find some offense along the way here too, aren't they? They really are. And hopefully they can find something. Banks is unable to finish on that jump hook. He's done the job defensively. Seven block shots in the first half for James Banks in third. Wow. Doing the job defensively. Now they're going to need him to step up his production on the offensive end of the floor. Reed out front. 11-point lead for the Tigers and Alvarado in high gear. DeVoe catch and shoot. And Thomas the rebound. You know, Wes, after the Georgia game, Josh Pastner realized that he couldn't have his team playing 25 seconds of trying to run offense and then trying to create something in the last five seconds. He gave his team the green light to be able to shoot the basketball earlier in the shot clock to try to get a quality look. And that's going to be the third foul on Elijah Thomas trying to set the screen and give Jose Alvarado a lot of credit for continuing to try to fight through that screen. And that's the reason why you see Thomas not set. You have to be able to get there and get set and allow the defender an opportunity to go around that screen. So here's David White back in the ballgame on Thomas's third foul. 
And White playing with two fouls as well, so he's going to have to be very careful not to pick up a third. We see another turnover for Georgia Tech. Yep. With Ten first half turnovers. Alvarado said that was my fault too. He went right to Haywood. And point said that guard, was on man. That's, that's point guard. You got to do that. Yep. Remember when you when you made um, Marquise Reed miss those two free throws <laughs> in the first half, but I took the blame for it. That's you know that's what the point guard does. All right, I hear you. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes gone. Reed against Alvarado. White trying to help. And along the inline, and Clemson forced into a turnover on the drive. Georgia Tech, we said this on Saturday at Tallahassee, they muddy the water on you. They want you to be, they want you to get frustrated running your offense. Absolutely. The one thing Josh Pastrick can't stand is for another team to be comfortable running their offense, especially in this building, where they are 5-5 five five versus AP top 25 teams over his two and a half years. And 14 and 9 at home in ACC play. Yep. Pull up for Sims. Good looking stroke from Amir Sims, who's got his third double figure game now in conference play. Lead is 13. Alvarado would tend to shoot. Feeds for Banks. Ten for Banks. I love the play by Jose Alvarado. A selfish play would have been, hey, look, I don't have a lot of points. Let me get this one up on the glass. Made a nice pump. They got two Tigers in the air. But he dumps it off. But James Banks, who's had a hard time finishing in his first half, gives him the easy dump. Let's see if that pays dividends for Banks on the offensive end of the floor moving forward. Yeah, just his second field goal for Banks, who was 6 of 8 line shooting in the opening frame. Five to shoot. Mitchell skips it across. Scar has got to cut this loose. Does with one. And hits. Seven for Scar. And West, that's two back to back mid range jump shots for Clemson. We saw Sims knock down one at the elbow. We see Scar knock down one off the dual penetration. And that, by analytics, people have looked at as a bad shot. Look at Banks the catch, and then White commits the foul. And. Javen White is going to be tagged with his third, second on Clemson. So Thomas and White now, both with three apiece for Brad Brownell. And Banks has had trouble finishing, but you see Alvarado does a great job taking two Clemson Tigers out of the pitcher, and then the easy dump off to James Banks. And that builds confidence, and that's what you want to see from a point guard and leader, establishing his teammates first. You know, I had an opportunity to talk with Jose Alvarado and shoot around today. Basically told him, hey, look, you made a stupid play to foul out of the game against Florida State. Your team needs you on the floor. Stop doing that. But also to make sure that he continues to be a leader for this bunch. Josh Pastor gave me the opportunity to sit and talk with him for a little while. And he's definitely approached the game differently than what we saw from him on Saturday. Yeah. Here's Mitchell off the high screen of Sims and turned it over. Alvarado ahead without numbers, had it blocked by Sims, made the save of it. Austin made the play. And now in the corner, here's Haywood. Hey, Austin back inside. Here's Banks the catch travel. And that'll get us to a break. 4-13 gone, second half. Clemson's pushed a nine-point lead at the break to 12 in Atlanta. ACC Hoops is brought to you by the official corporate champions of the ACC, Geico, New York Life, Bojangles' famous chicken and biscuits, Food Lion, and by Toyota. That's the Georgia Aquarium. Welcome back to Atlanta tonight. ACC College Hoops, Clemson 39, and Georgia Tech 27. Elijah Thomas with three fouls here early in the second half. And really, he was a difference maker in the first half, especially on the offensive end of the floor. Picking up that third really affects Clemson's offense and their defense, of course, when he, the way he's been protecting the rim. How long can Brad Brownell wait on his big man? Well, with three, I believe he'll get him back in during this segment before we get to the under-12 timeout, give him an opportunity to get back out there. But he's going to manage his minutes. You don't want him to sit too long and lose the rhythm that he had going into this game. So Sims 
even though the Tigers are on offense here against the zone, Sims is the biggest guy on the floor now. Well, Sims has the ability to play on the inside. And they're playing a smaller lineup, but that doesn't really affect them, especially if Banks isn't going to finish shots. DeVoe got it blocked, the rebound for Trapp and a foul, and Clyde Trapp, I think, got banged around on the James Banks foul, which is his second and the first on the Jackets here in half two. Clyde Trapp also was the one that tried to make that difficult pass all the way through the zone on the last possession. And having a little bit of a we'll call it a boo-boo. Traps. That didn't stop him from getting yelled at by Brad Brownell. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Brownell not feeling sorry for Trap after the turnover. Sims avoided the walk. Can't score from in front with Banks and DeVoe both there. And this is the part of the ball game on Saturday where Georgia Tech force misses but couldn't take advantage at the offensive end. Yeah, but on their home court, they've got to find a way to be able to make shots. And it's not always going to be about the three. Even though they did shoot the three well in the first half, they can try to attack the basket, especially with Elijah Thomas on the bench. This is the area where you attack the basket versus Clemson to see if you can get something at the rim. Alvarado missed. Scar the rebound. Tigers work the perimeter here to find a seam if they can. And Brad Brownell yelling out to his group, they're in man. Because with, with Georgia Tech, they often confuse opposing teams, whether they're in the zone or whether they're in the man, because their zone is a matchup. And then once recognizing in the man, Shelton Mitchell recognized he had an opportunity to get to the rim. Six minutes gone here in the second half. 14-point lead for Clemson. That's one of the changes with having Sims as the five for Clemson does because now you pull Banks away from the rim because Sims' ability to shoot the three. They got stripped out of there. They'll stay with the Jackets. Nine to shoot for Georgia Tech. Khalid Moore reports back for Coach Passner. And here is A.D. Gay's first appearance of the second half with just ahead of uh, six minutes gone. And three fouls on A.D. Gay, so he's got to make sure he plays smart basketball to stay away from that fourth foul. But again, Amir Sims, who could, probably has a better chance guarding James Banks than he does A.D. Gay. A.D. Gay much more capable on the block with the basketball in his hands now. Jump hook with a right hand. Four for Gay who's got six straight double-figure games and has averaged 13 and six, Corey, in his last five. And you're going to see him get his touches at this point of the game, coming into the game, and now very fresh after sitting a lot of the first half with the three fouls, and then this is his first entry into the game in the second half. He's going to get his opportunities to get his hands on the basketball on the offensive end of the floor. Ten to shoot, and now the clock at six. Here's Sims with five. May have to launch and done. And the rebound, Haywood. Austin, back for Curtis Haywood. Dribble drive, tried to get it to Gay, deflected by Reed. And really, this is where A.D. Gay has developed as a basketball player. Patient, faces up, and then recognizes he can get to that jump hook and finish over top of Amir Sims. And if I'm Georgia Tech right now, pretty much everything I'm running, I'm trying to get the ball in the hands of 34. Here's Gay again. Up and under move with the left hand. Six for A.D. Gay and Eric Revenos. Prize pupil doing some work, Corey. He really is. And again, we saw him come out against Florida State extremely aggressive. And coming off the bench with those three fouls, you're seeing A.D. Gay recognizing he feels as though he can score against anyone on the block. And for the last two possessions, he's been able to do so. Yep. Seven and a half gone. Ten-point lead. Clemson now trying to find something here with two to shoot. Reed throws it up, and the air ball and a shot clock violation. Second one tonight enforced by Georgia Tech defensively. And A.D. Gay getting it done on the right block, so you go to him on the left block. And he makes Clemson pay once again. No double team. And, Wes, at this point, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Get the ball back in the hands of 34. And Austin scores. Nine for Brandon Austin. He's given Georgia Tech a lift. And a timeout for the Tigers. A.D. Gay off the bench. Four in a row. 
Boston's added a basket. Jackets are as close as they've been in the second half. Brandon Austin on the attack. Able to find the seam. Is able to knock it down. Cutting the Clemson lead to eight. With Corey Alexander, West Durham, our producer, Rio Jovencius, Lonnie Dale, our director. Great to have you with us for Wednesday night ACC Hoops. And the Tigers will have the ball. And, Corey, first time we can say this, they're trying to stop Georgia Tech's offensive momentum here in the ballgame. They, they really are. When you think about it, the, since A.D. Gay checked in the game, three for three on the offensive end of the floor. And because of that, Brad Brownell recognizes that he needs Eli Thomas back in the game. Thomas gets his hands on the basketball. A nice kick out. Gay against Thomas, right hand, left it on the front. You know, and that's a play, and nothing wrong with the right hand jump hook from Gay because that's his specialty. But he's got to recognize, as a Keith Reed recognizes Scar for a beautiful foul on the baseline, but Gay has to recognize that Elijah Thomas has three fouls. He's got to go into the body and see if he can get Thomas with that fourth foul because everyone knows Clemson's a different team when Thomas is on the bench. David Scar, by the way, has nine. Three ball, no good. The Tiger lead 10. Scar has never been double figures in ACC play for the Tigers. Slashes to the basket. Rimmed off. Thomas had it. Off the head of Gay. It'll stay with the Tigers. But first, a timeout in Atlanta. 11 minutes to play. 10-point lead for Clemson. Back after this. Protecting the paint, James Banks with seven, I repeat, seven first half blocks. Doing a tremendous job protecting the paint for Georgia Tech. It seems as though every time Clemson attacked the basket, James Banks was getting his hand on the basketball. And he sits right now as A.D. Gay has come in and sparked the offense. And Josh Pastor having a difficult time versus this Clemson team playing A.D. Gay and James Banks at the same time. But you give up a lot because that means one of your best players has to be on the bench. But he has to do that for offensive purposes. They're not as good offensively with both these guys on the floor. Banks, by the way, the seven is nine shy of the school record as Reed scores on the backdoor cut. Nine for Marquise Reed. Oh, you said nine short. Shot? No, the, the record is 16. Is that Alvin Jones? It is. Wow. In his first collegiate game. Ooh. I, I, I tell you what, it's all downhill from there. If you have a, a debut with 16 block shots. It was all downhill. Three ball more in terms of that number. I mean, he finished as the all-time block shot leader at Georgia Tech and top five in ACC history. Yeah, but if, if you, your first game is 16, right. you got to average eight a game. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the ball got deflected and last touched. Doug Sermon says last touched Georgia Tech. John Higgins helps him out. And it will belong to the Jackets with 10-14 to play in a 12-point contest. And after the three straight possessions where Georgia Tech was able to score, right. they stalled on offense, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that the shots they were taking, a three by Austin, which wasn't a bad shot, but then the three by Moore, and now you start to settle on the outside of comparison to getting the ball inside the paint, where Gay has had so much success. Remember, Thomas plays with three. Sims only has a single foul, and he's defending Gay now here at the block. Alvarado trying to find a crack in it. You see, the problem with trying to post Gay with Banks in the game is because Thomas is playing right in his lap. There's Sims ripping away the rebound. Seventh meeting between the two schools in this McCamus Pavilion facility. They're tied at three apiece. Clemson looking for their first conference road win tonight as Reed runs it down with 15 to shoot. Crowd thought Reed doubled. Ball got hit by a jacket, though. Here's Reed, a little catch. And pop jump shot for Marquise Reed, who's got 11 now in his fifth field goal. Reed's played very calmly despite not maybe being as productive at the free throw line, maybe not shooting as well from the floor as he'd like. Yeah, and he's, you know, you're talking about a fifth year graduate you know who's not going to get sped up by the game and recognizes also he's going to have his opportunities as the game gets closer to the end nice play there by devoe to find banks over the top 
Taking advantage of the hedge on Elijah Thomas. And there's no rotation because the last thing that Amir Sims wants to do is leave A.D. Gay because of the way that he's been going. Right. Tried to go inside, deflected from Thomas. Jackets on the run, three on two. Alvarado spots for three. Missed everything. Well, point game with eight and a half to ride. Reed all the way through. 13 for Marquise Reed and a Georgia Tech timeout. This is some kind of take right here. Well, Wes, this was just an eight-point game. Georgia Tech had the momentum, and then Marquise Reed happened. We saw the mid-range earlier, and then, of course, the highlight-level move to push the lead to 14 for the Tigers. Georgia Tech's been forcing more out of Clemson. Jack, it's only two of them here in the second half. But the area of concern now for Georgia Tech, they started, they were three for five in the first half, 0 for four here in the second half from beyond the arc. And oftentimes those shots have been settled shots in comparison to getting the ball inside the paint where A.D. Gay has been able to have his way against the Clemson defense. So a 14-point game for Clemson. And with 8.21 to go, here is... Freshman Michael DeVoe from Orlando bring it in at the front court. Banks on the roll off the screen at the top. Haywood is scoreless tonight for the Jackets. Now here's Banks working in space. Lost it against Thomas and Reed with the turnover. Well, lots of Thomas just went down. is holding his mouth. And... Brian O'Connell is going to stop play here. Thomas will go to the corner where Clemson basketball trainer Brad Crow is. And I'm thinking we're probably going to see a, a monitor review on that one. When you see someone grabbing their mouth, normally that means that there was an elbow thrown. And you definitely get an elbow right there from Banks. I don't know if it's inadvertent or if it was intentional, but Here's a better look, the two guys... And you see Thomas trying to get position and trying to seal Banks getting back to try to get position on the block. So the end zone look. A little more information to glean from that. Yeah, it, it definitely was a that was a elbow, but it was, I don't, I'm not sure if it was an inadvertent elbow. You see Banks with both arms up. And really when you look at When you look at Thomas stopping to try to get the position, Banks turns and really is just trying to get around. And I, I think I like the no call by the officials, and they've determined that they've got nothing there and will continue to play basketball. So play on it is. And Tigers will have the ball. Trap back in the ball game. Sales it out for Reed to the backcourt. And a foul call here on Thomas. That's going to be four on Elijah Thomas, just trying to establish post position. And Javin White will come back in in West. Oh, we also have to mention the run from Clemson offensively. As you see right here, Thomas. I, I will say this. That is a foul in today's basketball because Thomas invaded the cylinder of James Banks. Right. The basketball that you play in the ACC, that's the way you had to post up. So, again, yeah. you know, if you've got James Ford sitting down there, you're not going to just walk into the paint and think you're going to get post position. You've got to go hit him first. So, But in the era of freedom of movement, that is a foul. That's a foul. You know, and, and that's going to be called, especially in plain sight of the official. And you have to look at the fact that Clemson's run came when Elijah Thomas came back into the game. Brad Brunel inserted Thomas back into the game once Georgia Tech cut this game to eight. And just like that, Thomas was able to help the Tigers push that lead back into double figures. Here's Trapp on the rebound by Sims. And Clemson elects to bring it back out and reset their set, reset offensively here, and also take some more time off. Sims a three. And it drops in for Amir Sims. He shot that like he's in Little John. He got the home bounce yes, on that did. one. 13 tonight for Sims. And the lead. 
Here's 17. 52 to 35 with six and a half to go. Alvarado somehow got it to Cole and now DeVoe is straight away three. Michael DeVoe, both of his baskets are triples. And when he shoots the ball in rhythm, he's a very good shooter. I think oftentimes DeVoe gets caught up in questioning whether he should take a shot or not. When he just catches and relaxes and shoots the basketball in rhythm, he's normally knocking those down. Under six to go. For the school's match threes, and here is Reed missing a baseline jumper and Cole the rebound. A hit to Alvarado and a whistle and foul will be on White. That'll be the fourth on Javen White with 5.48 to play. And Amir Sims getting a little John bounce here in McCamish Pavilion. And on the other end of the floor, Michael DeVoe catching and shooting, confidently knocking it down with logo range. It's cold. Tried to bounce it inside. White stepped in front. <laughs> he forced the turnover. Wes, to be honest, White took a steal away from Marquise Reed because if White <laughs> didn't get it, Reed right. would have gotten it. Both those guys actually anticipating exactly where the ball was going to be thrown. White just jumped in front of his teammate to pick up the steal. Reed through traffic, lost it. They go to the deck and out of it comes DeVoe. Here is Haywood. Back for Cole. And the crowd anxious there because Haywood did not take the three. And that's the best time to take it in transition. Now you have to go play against a set defense and force a tough shot. Alvarado the miss, White the rebound. Corey, it also speaks to something you said earlier. Georgia Tech may just be better if they initiate the offense on their first look. And I know that Curtis Haywood's percentage is not good, but he is a three-point shooter. And in that position, Everything was set up for him to be able to take the easy look from three. And because he does it, they don't get his bucket on the other end. And Marquise Reed adds two more to his tab. A four-point swing in the direction of Clemson. Yeah, 15 tonight for Reed. The lead is 16. With four and a half to go. And Banks fouled by White. And that will be all for Javen White. So White going to foul out of the ball game. And... This will be the first time he has fouled out of an ACC game, and it will be the first time he's fouled out of a ball game at Clemson. And it comes with 4.31 to play. A long discussion between Brad Brownell and his assistant coaches as to who he was going to go with. Was he going to go with, with Eli Thomas? They went Trey Jemison instead, right? And especially when you've got the media timeout coming right. in 30 seconds or whenever you get the next dead ball. I think that was the right move in comparison to putting Thomas back in at this point. Cole for three out of the double team on the pass from Gay. And now here's Shelton Mitchell with Sims, Reed, Scara, and Jemison. Approaching four minutes to go. Reed looking inside against the zone. Now shakes Cole and fires the two. 17 now for Reed. Largest lead of the ball game for Clemson at 18. And another just great individual play by Marquise Reed getting to his spot. Yes, a two-point shot, which is a great shot when it goes in. Baseline Cole hit a wall and traveled. That's and a wall. Was Trey Jemison. Great defense by Jemison, standing his ground, didn't flop, didn't take a charge. And on the other end of the floor, Marquise Reed starting to get in his bag, West. The cross, the mid race pull up, and the 18 point lead. Marquise Reed finding his way to the rim, weaving between multiple yellow jackets. And able to finish the concentration and Reed started out the game quietly, but he's caught fire here. 341 to play. Christian Scholen, freshman from Katy, Texas, who grew up in Norway, moved to Texas at age 14, has come in a ball game for Georgia Tech. Now he is a shooter. 
You know, and I'm looking at the numbers from Marquise Reed coming into the game. I knew he was in the top five of scoring. I wasn't sure, but a lot of it has to do with our guy, Brian Morrison. Yep, out of the office right now. Shout out to BMO. And BMO get well soon. Yep. He's the one that keeps us up to date on everything ACC. Yep. So BMO get well, get well soon. We miss you, big guy, and we need you back. <laughs> Here is Mitchell on the drive. Reed, another one. That could have been the Jaguar drive of the game. 19 for Reed. And you mentioned earlier how he had, didn't force anything, just allowed the game to come to him, stayed patient, and allowed his teammates to operate and have success. We saw success with Elijah Thomas earlier. Amir Sims played well. But as the game got caught up into a back-and-forth affair with Marquise Reed stepping up, getting it done. Nice move, Brandon Austin now with double figures. Austin's got 11 on his fourth field goal of the night. He and Banks... The only double-figure scores for Georgia Tech in the ball game. And West for the second straight game, Josh Passler having to play without Jose Alvarado, but this time it's an option, it's a choice to have Alvarado off the floor and David. electing to go with Michael DeVoe at the point guard position. By the way, David Scars, jump shot Corey, his first ever double-figure game against the ACC. Thomas the block, look out, Mitchell back for Thomas, and then he threw it away, and... Scarra Gal advances the double figure number. <laughs> Look at Elijah Thomas with both arms up because he dropped the dime off of the botched alley oop. Yep. And now the big fella got in trouble for trying to go 94 feet on, on Sunday and picked up the charge. This time gives it to the guard. Mitchell gets it back. And then, of course, the drop off to Scar, who has an ACC career high. And then Marquise Reed continues to play stellar basketball, getting to his average. And I believe this may be the last we see of the Clemson starters. Well, it sets up our North Myrtle Beach look ahead in the ACC, and you see Saturday, number 11, Virginia Tech comes calling at Little John after the loss to Louisville, and then road trips to Miami and Louisville before Florida State comes back in a, in a round two matchup that the Knowles won a week ago. Well, Wes, if Clemson finishes this off, they get the four and five in the ACC. Right. Virginia Tech, most likely minus Justin Robinson. We don't have a lot of information on his injury. Right. But you're assuming that Justin Robinson doesn't play and coming to Little John Coliseum, that would be a huge win if the Tigers are able to get that one and get back to 5-5 five and five, 500 in the ACC and they'll start to find themselves back into the middle of the pack in this league. Ball thrown away on the bounce pass for Gay by Sholin. And Abdullah Gay's had a tough night. Only six, only six points and that's his fourth foul. And for Georgia Tech, they don't have many fouls at all in this second half. In fact, that's just their second foul of the second half. Well, at this and point, Scar comes out. He's got double figures in the league. He went 26 ACC games without a double figure game. Well, he's over there. You know, of course, he gets to dap up Terrence Oglesby and Terrell McIntyre. So <laughs> he should he should be able to score just by dapping those guys up. No question. Because you're talking about two big time bucket getters mm. sitting on the Clemson bench right now helping out the top. Three ball for Mitchell. He's got seven. There's Boogie and T.O. Yeah, man. We were talking to those guys earlier today about who was the biggest gunner. See, see you know, T-Mac has my excuse. We were point guards, so we've got high assist numbers yes, regardless of the number of shots right. that we've taken, and that's his excuse. Oglesby, no excuse. He's no. one of the biggest gunners all time in the ACC. Have gun will travel for Terrence Oglesby. <laughs> I, I love him for it. Yep. 120 to play. Clemson's got Newman, Parker Fox, or uh, Hunter Tyson has come on the floor, I should say. We're in number five with Mitchell, and Lyles Davis is going to check in. Now, this is one of the best stories in the ACC. Lyles, who hit a deep three on Sunday, by the way, for the Tigers, was put on scholarship for the spring. After being a three-year walk-on, he's playing tonight in his... 19th career ball game for Brad Brownell. Not, not only did Lyles knock down the three, he also shot an imaginary arrow into the sky afterwards. Of course, he had his imaginary backpack of arrows. <laughs> <laughs> after, he, after he held the three up. Yeah. 
The Clemson fans loved it. Elijah Thomas might have been the biggest fan of the whole operation. Oh, yeah. He, Elijah Thomas had a great night Sunday. Well, actually, I guess it was an afternoon game. Yeah, Super Bowl Sunday. We had a great day in everything that he did, especially cheering on his teammates. Jemison's lob stolen by Gay. We're in the final 37 seconds. Here is Moore and the foul. So the Georgia Tech free throws will be coming after the foul against John Newman the third. His first and the fifth on the Tigers, our seventh here in the second half on Clemson. And here is Khalid Moore, 74% at the line for two. And that's the first point of the night, Brownells team. Brad is welcoming Virginia Tech. And Corey, they're shooting it well. Last two ball games coming in, they were 51% from the floor, 44% from three. Here's Parker Fox checking in. And this is the uh, son of the former Georgia head coach, Mark Fox, who, of course, spent nine years in Athens and took the Bulldogs to five postseason trips. And so Tyson Fox, Davis Newman, and Jemison will finish out the final 25 seconds for Clemson here in Atlanta. And Wes, I think this is the first time that Brad Brunel has sat down this entire game. Yep. We got a shot, shot of him sitting down, relaxing, now feeling like they've gotten this one done. Newman tried to get it to Davis. Shambari Phillips stole it. They battle for it. Newman's got it. Back for Fox is three. And the rebound for Jemison and the horn sound. Clemson beats Georgia Tech for a fifth straight time for the seventh time in the last 10 games and for the 17th time in the last 21. Tigers 65, Jackets 42 tonight here in Atlanta. Third straight win for Clemson. They've now won four of their last six, and the Tigers are 14 and eight, and now four and five in the ACC. Georgia Tech falls to 11 and 12. They're three and seven in ACC play, headed to Notre Dame on Sunday. We hope to have Marquise Reed with Corey Alexander on a winning night for Clemson in Atlanta. Back after this. with 19 points to lead three Tigers in double figures. And of course, he had a punch along the way and a score on the baseline. And Reed had our Jaguar drive of the game, and he's with Corey Alexander. And Marquise, for you, you really kind of started out the game in chill mode, a little slow, but in the second half, you decided to take it over. What got into your thought process? Uh, just figuring out their defense, you know, they kept going back and forth between the zone and the man. So once we got that figured out, it slowed uh, the game down for me. And, of course, you had 30 points in the game when you played earlier this year. Did you know they would be coming out trying to take you out of the mix? Uh, absolutely. I knew that I was going to be on top of this guy report. Coach uh, told me that they're going to have an out for me. So I just had to adjust throughout the game, and I found my uh, rhythm in the second half. Okay, and of course, as your team has won three straight games, and now you're starting to feel better about yourselves, what's the next step for this Clemson team? Uh, you know, just continue with the momentum. You know, we had a few home games, string a couple wins together, got a road win for the first time in the ACC. Now we're going back home on Saturday, so hopefully we just keep the streak going. And as the schedule kind of is in your favor, you've got Virginia Tech at home before going back out on the road. What are you guys looking to accomplish over this next stretch? Uh, just get as many uh, road wins as we can. You know, and the ACC is hard to win on the road, so string as many road wins as uh, we can because that's true. That's basically a double win. All right, good job. Congratulations on a big game tonight. Corey, thanks very much. Stay tuned. Final thoughts from Atlanta. 23-point win for Clemson, 65-42 on a Wednesday night of ACC Hoops. Back after this. ACC road win, a quick check of the final stats. Another tough shooting night for Georgia Tech. The Jackets finished just 30% from the floor, 4 of 12 from 3. Clemson won the boards by a margin of 15 tonight. And it's rare that you see an opposing team come into this building and shoot the basketball well against Georgia Tech's defense, but Clemson playing with a tremendous amount of confidence right now. We talked with Marquise Reed about it. They feel as like they're playing good basketball right now. They've got some momentum on their side trying to keep that going. But that's a special performance when you're able to come to McCamish and shoot that well against Georgia Tech. It's also an old basketball team in the ACC. Some fifth-year guys, some grad guys. 
That's a veteran team going down the stretch. They'll know what this will be like, yeah, right? Yeah, Clemson has five fifth-year players on their roster right now, all those guys in the rotation giving them quality minutes. So you're absolutely right. They have the experience, and they've been here before. Mm. So they didn't get phased by the one-and-five start because they knew they played basketball well enough to be in a better situation. Didn't take advantage of some of those wins, but they're doing it right now. And simple for Georgia Tech, Corey, quickly. they got to find offense. They, they Bottom really line. They've got to find a way to shoot the basketball better. I'm not sure how Josh Pastner makes that happen mm. during the season, but they've got to find a way to feel, just have a better field goal percentage. All right, Tigers will get Virginia Tech on Saturday. Georgia Tech has got a Sunday game at the Purcell Pavilion against Notre Dame. Jackets won round one against the Irish by two points here in Atlanta. We've got ACC College Hoops for you next Wednesday night in Tallahassee. How about Wake Forest, number 22, Florida State. 7 o'clock, I'll join the G-Man from the Florida State Capitol. For Corey Alexander, our producer, Rio Jovencius, our director, Lonnie Dale, our great ACC College Hoops crew, West Durham for McCamish Pavilion in Midtown Atlanta. Clemson 65, Georgia Tech 42. Thanks for watching ACC College Hoops on your regional sports network.